Welcome back. Chapter 12 in macroeconomics on production and growth. If you recall, there was a principle about how economies that are more productive have a higher standard of living. Well, what does productivity mean? Well, it means output. It means you're producing things, be it peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or a BMW automobile. What if I told you that you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in a BMW automobile the same way, with the same ingredients? You look at me and you say, Professor Kiesel, you're crazy. Am I? Yes, I am crazy. But hey, you signed up for the course. Um, no, it's not so crazy. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and BMWs, while their physical ingredients may be different, their inputs are the same. So what do you need to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Well, let's see, you need bread, okay? You need jelly and you need peanut butter, but is that it? No, you need a knife and hopefully a paper towel or a plate or something. All you people making sandwiches without plates and stuff, mama, mama would come after you hard for all the crumbs, okay? So you need the natural resources. You need the peanut butter, the jelly, and the bread, which is made from wheat, from flour. Um, you need some tools, some physical capital, which is the knife. Uh, the plate, maybe a paper towel, and then you need a person to put it together, okay? Um, you need the same things to build a BMW. Uh, to build a BMW, you need things like rubber, steel, aluminum, plastic, okay, natural resources, things from the land. Um, you need workers to put it together. There's your labor. You need physical capital um, in that... You have to have a factory to build it in. You need robots to assist you. You need a, you know, a winch or a crane or a wrench. and um, You need all these things, a thing, you know, conveyor belt to move things down the, the assembly line. You need all these things. But you also need knowledge. You need human capital. So you have physical capital, which are tools, and then human capital, which is an understanding. You also need to live in a place or a BMW factory that has some advanced knowledge. Um, they have infrastructure in place that allow for pretty sophisticated manufacturing. And you're like, well, that's not the same for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yes, it is. Okay. You have to have the knowledge of which type of jelly you prefer. Um, you also have to have the advanced technological knowledge to know you can take a bowl, additional physical capital, mix everything up, and make a primo peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, that depends on people's preferences, how they see that. But the basically overall, the ingredients are all the same. Output, this is a production function. Output Y, that's output, that's your productivity, is a function, I'm going to come back to A, so a function of, so mathematically, a function of L, K, H, and N. Well, what is that? L is your labor, your workers. You physically need someone to pick up a butter knife and spread the, the peanut butter. You physically need someone to show up and help build the car. You have capital, physical capital. I'm talking about tools here. That's the factory. That's the tools you give them. That's the kitchen you're in when you're making the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's the peanut butter, that's, excuse me, that's the butter knife. Um, that's the plate, hopefully, you're using. Again, Mama Kiesler, she'd get after you. Um, hey, Mom, if you're watching this. Uh, human capital. Human capital is education, training, and experience. I love going on vacation. People are like, well, first of all, I love going on vacation. Remember back when we could travel before the pandemic? That was awesome. Um, people are like, so what do you do for a living? And I said, nah, I install human capital. And they're like, well, is that like cable? I'm like, exactly. No. I install human capital in that I am educating you, providing you some light training. The company you eventually work for, or your own company, will train you. Okay? And you'll gain experience over time. Now, be thinking about, especially a freshman, Maybe procuring an internship, try to get some experience in a field you're interested in. Just saying, you can get a little experience and build that human capital. That's your experience, okay? Education, training, and experience. You're here at SMC to get more education. Then N is natural resources. That's the land itself or things from the land. Could be, you know, hydroelectric power, could be uh, minerals to make aluminum, uh, could be rubber trees, could be whatever. That's stuff you take from the land. Could be wheat out of a farmer's field to make flour, which is used to make bread, which then you use to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Okay? Hmm, just thought of something. There's probably somebody at, it's around lunchtime and I'm recording this, probably somebody at BMW right now eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? Um, so, very simply, productivity is a function of labor, capital, human capital, and natural resources. What's this A? That's how advanced your technological knowledge is. 
It's how advanced your technological knowledge is. That's the infrastructure coming in. One of the poorest countries on the face of the earth, and they change political powers, like have coups every other Tuesday, it feels like, is Mali. It's an African nation in Mali. Why are they so poor? Well, they don't have a lot of advanced technological knowledge, but they also don't have something called property rights. So how advanced a country becomes, their standard of living starts with property rights. Once you have property rights, people can make inventions and make a ton of money off of them. Once they make inventions, new inventions come, and the economy starts rolling and building upon one another, okay? Um, in the U.S., if I want to build a factory down the street from where I live, I can. I absolutely can. If I have the means, the permitting, and everything, I can do that. I can employ tens of thousands of people, all right? I have that opportunity within this country, not only politically, uh, legally, but also, I also have the in infrastructure that Duke Energy can run as much power into that place as I need. There are places in the world where they don't have that. So this is how advanced your technological knowledge is. So, or technological capability, whatever you want to do. I always, you know, and one of the things I like about this text, not only does it talk to students on their own level and kind of meet you where you are and give relevant examples, I like the fact that this A is not in here. So this output is a function of labor capital, human capital and natural resources. That's true here or a third world country like Mali. But what, what differentiates something overall, and why I'm glad it's over here, is advanced technological knowledge. Things like the wisdom that property rights are a good thing. All right? Things like patents can allow you to invent something which can allow you to capitalize upon that. That's people responding to incentives. If you have a million dollar idea, you patent it and you get your million dollars. Okay? You have recourse there. You have property rights. But your advanced technological knowledge, the system that you're in, I can open a factory tomorrow and have power to it, have water to it, and have a, a base of workers with human capital that have been trained in a society with advanced technological knowledge that they can build basically whatever I want. And that is why BMW likes to locate in places like Greer, South Carolina, right in between Greenville and Spartanburg. It's because they have this A. They can turn out cars, they can turn out peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because of advanced technological knowledge. They got workers, those workers have tools including the factory. They have human capital which is education, training, and experience. Trust me, they'll train you. You'll get experience in your education you're getting right now. And they have natural resources, all the inputs they need to be very productive. Now this is the conclusion of our first of two lectures we'll have in chapter 12 on productivity and growth. Just remember, the more you produce, be it in this course or in this country, the higher your standard of living.